Ubuntu. Um, and if you want to know why, you can ask me afterwards. Um, <laughs> and uh, so if you want to install it in a virtual machine, then try to get VirtualBox or VMware Player on your system beforehand. If you want to install it on bare metal, um, then defragment your hard drive beforehand. That can take several hours, if not all night, depending on when was the last time you did it. So um, make sure you do that well in advance. Uh, and then two weeks after that, we will be having uh, ALSYS, which is our Advanced System Linux Administration Seminar, which basically, it has advanced in the name, but it's really designed for people who are a little bit past the intro stage. So if you've installed Linux, you've played around with it a little bit, maybe for two weeks since, oh, I don't know, install fest, then come on in. Um, ALSYS will have limited seating. So if you want to go to ALSYS, that's March 1st, make sure you RSVP to my email uh, sometime before then. So uh, today we have Nicole Carlson from SpaceX. She's going to be talking a little bit about um, uh, the company and what she does there. So uh, let's give her a warm round of applause. We also design, build in-house, 
and uh, we're currently working on getting that helium rated so that um, we can um, launch our own astronauts to the space station instead of having to hit a ride with the Russians. I, I was actually at the, uh, the launch in October. Oh my God, it was off the book. It was, it was one of those moments that, you know, like, you know, I spent four years of undergrad and three years of grad, and moments like this, it's all worthwhile. <laughs> several entities on the planet total that can do it. Most of them are um, uh, most of them are state governments and one of them is SpaceX. Just to put all this in perspective. So um, uh, um, CRS that, that, that was the first resupply mission. Um, I was I was actually I I had been hired by that point, so I got to see that. Um, so I got to see the launch and stuff on site, which was quite incredible. Um, so yeah, and um, uh, we launched. Uh, we have two launch sites currently. One in Cape Canaveral, Florida, where they launched the, the other shuttles and rockets from, and then uh, one up here in Vandenberg Air Force Base, just up in Ventura County. Uh, so hopefully we uh, intend to launch from both of those. Um, stop me if you have any questions. I just want me to talk about something more. So this is our current manifest, which is a fancy aerospace way of saying uh, launch schedule. Um, so this is our, our current plan as it stands now. Um, um, uh, uh, we're, we're, uh, we're doing a few runs for a uh, for, 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 uh, for a, uh, for a communications satellite outfit called the Um we're, we're continuing to resupply to ISS. The one in October was just the first one scheduled out of many, which are going to take place over the next several years. Um, then we, uh, uh, we we are not a government, obviously. We're we're a, we're a company, so we uh, we have different customers, not all of which are the U.S. Defense Department. Uh, the uh, the aforementioned Orcom is is a private outfit, uh, communication satellites. Uh, then Taikom is, 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 is in Thailand. That's the um, that's the Thailand uh, the Thai uh, some sort of communication satellites again. I'm, I'm, I don't I'm not in that end of the business really. Um, and um, um, I know from a security perspective, you you may notice <coughs> that uh, um, if if we're launching stuff from Thailand, Taiwan, Hong Kong. Um, these are owned by entities that are not necessarily friendly towards some of our other customers, such as the U.S. Defense Department. So it is my job, among other things, to keep them to uh, to, uh, to segregate uh, these two very highly motivated uh, and, and resource-rich <coughs> customers from getting into each other's stuff. So um, we are headquartered in Hawthorne, California, which is uh, just uh, just out by the uh, uh, which is just out by LA Airport. Um, it's great. We we, uh, we share kind of a rough campus with, with Tesla, which is our founder Elon Musk's other company. Uh, well, one of his other companies. Um, 
and, and I and I check. We don't get discounts on cars. <laughs> Testing rock engines here since the 40s. We started here in 2003 and have over 130 people now. We average about a test a day. 
Well, this is called the blockhouse. It's uh, an underground bunker. This is where we control engine um, testing, like the Merlin uh, booster engine. So this is the very first place we ever fired a rocket engine on, was this right here. This is a very early days, first test, so a lot of excitement here. This is a, a vertical test stand in that the engines fire straight down. So this is a 95,000 pound thrust engine. Basically this engine will burn a hole right through concrete. We have a big water-cooled flame deck that takes that, that exhaust and deflects it out into the field. This is the small site test area where we have four test stands in one place. Right here on the right we have the dual Merlin test stand where we can install two engines and be firing one at a time. In the middle here we have the upper stage test stand where we can fire a full upper stage for full duration as a final check before we ship it to the cave. And then over here on the left we have the MVAC stand where we do the final testing of the individual upper stage engines before they go into the stage test. This little engine is it's 90 pounds of thrust. It only operates in the vacuum of space. So in order to test it here, we have to run it in, in a vacuum cell. So you can see the stainless steel cell here that closes up. Um, and we actually operate this thing up to about the melting point of steel, about 2,500 degrees out. This thing basically runs white hot when we're running this thrust. This is the Dragon module test area where we take one of the four quads that's in a Dragon that has five thrusters on it fire those thrusters just like we do in space on the Dragon capsule. This is a hangar where the stage hardware arrives and gets final assembly here before it goes up on the tripod for final test. Here we have the tank assembly and the engine assembly. The two get joined together and become the first stage of Falcon 9. This building is a central shop. We have engineering up front and workshops in the back where technicians do all the plumbing, electrical, and fabrication of things to support testing out on the test stand. This is the component test stand where we test individual components that go into engines or stage assemblies, things like valves, turbo pumps, gas generators. This is the Falcon 9 structural test stand where we do stage testing of both stages and separation of the stages. Here on the big tripod test stand, we fire the Falcon 9 first stage, all nine engines generating almost a million pounds of thrust. The test lasts as long as three minutes, which is the same as an actual flight duration.
and um, there are other little there's little port holes and stuff. Yes. What does it take to get human rated? What does it take to get human rated? Um, it takes NASA to sign off on it, basically, right. which which means that NASA has to be convinced that you're not going to kill uh, people. Yes. Yeah. So they don't actually have uh, a whole like uh, specifications for. They, they, um, NASA absolutely does have specifications. And then, like, something that they've published for, like, private companies, etc. they've done that? Um, well, I know that it's not just us um, uh, that's going for human rights space companies. There's a couple other companies, one called Sierra Nevada Designs, that has kind of a plane design. And then um, um, at ULA, United Launch um, Alliance, which is uh, the bastard love child of Lucky Martin going, um, has one as well. Um, so, yes, there are specifications, and our job now is to demonstrate that, that the dragon meets them. So, like, in, in your enormous checklist, you, you go through and you say, does it, uh, does it withstand so much pressure? Check. Does it, uh, does it um, is the stress test not less than such and such? Check. And you just have to conclusively demonstrate to NASA that you meet all of their requirements. Uh, and if you do it from another country, do you still need NASA's approval? Um, if you want to carry NASA's astronauts, you do. Yeah. Uh, so would the uh, Virgin Galactic split the plane? I believe that is a... Um, I'm, I'm not 100% I'm not familiar with this, but I believe that the Virgin Galactic space plane is uh, kind of a different project. It's, it's designed for like high suborbital flights and not necessarily um, rendezvousing with the ISS. Yeah, I, I didn't know who was under the same classification though. Um, here we get into arguing about the definition of space and where space begins and what suborbital that means. And honestly, I, I don't uh, really know. Who this. So. <coughs> How long do you think before the dragon gets uh, human rated? How long before dragon gets human rated? Probably a few years. Um, I, I, I spent my I spent my career before SpaceX um, in in a in a more government um, in a more government environment, and um, things move extremely slowly in government. For uh, for one particular type of certification, 18 months is considered an extremely ambitious schedule. So stuff does not move fast. Um, you, uh, it's enormously complex. There's a lot of stuff to be done, and you have to get. Uh, basically, you have to get everyone to agree on what the requirements are, what they mean, whether they're applicable, whether they're met. Uh, so there's a lot of so so there's a lot of arguing that goes on kind of behind the scenes of what, what on the surface appears to be a fairly straightforward thing. Does it meet these requirements? Check, check, check. In reality, you have to get everyone together to agree on what the requirements mean and uh, what it means to perform. So yeah, it, it'll probably take another three-ish years. Yes? You mentioned earlier that <clears throat> this is one of the first rocket major redesigns in a long time. Yeah. What's so different? Um, I'm not actually a rocket scientist, so I, 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 I don't really know. Um, I, I, I do know that um, your, your, your Saturn V's and whatnot are, are sort of built around one giant thruster. We're built around multiple smaller thrusters. And um, <coughs> here we take leave of my humble knowledge of rocket design. I, uh, I, I am not too conversant with rocket design. <laughs> oh, yes? Uh, what part of the rocket do you work on for? I, I am an information assurance engineer, so I work on no part of the rocket. Um, I work um, kind of on the on the systems that support rocket launches. So um, obviously, if 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 we're if SpaceX is sitting in mission control in Hawthorne, which is where it is, and uh, like you saw in one of the earlier videos, everyone's going nuts outside. Uh, that's in Hawthorne. We're communicating with the Cape Canaveral people. Um, so um, that that connection obviously has to be. Uh, free of interference. You don't want. Uh, I don't want some joker to substitute his instructions for ours. Um, 
uh, I, I don't want some jokers who God forbid to watch the self-destruct thing or, or whatever. So, so that connection has to be kept um, con um, uh, secret and it has to be kept, um, um, I have to maintain the integrity of the connection. Um, so you can see that it's, even though it's not part of a rocket or dragon per se, it's kind of important to the whole launching of them, if you will, and so that's more my area. maintaining our internal networks um, so that different parts stay out of each other's way, basically. And yet, people still have the ability to do their jobs. So the answer is no part of the rocket, but it's important nonetheless.
this is it's shaped kind of like a muffin with the top cut flush, and it's entering with the muffin top down. And there's there's a bunch of what's called the latest movies. Uh, right now, dragging plants by splashing down in the ocean. Um, we can get part of the landing, but that's another huge Is there still any interest in naval uh, using a ship as a launch platform, or is that kind of been thrown out the window? Again, I'm, I'm not the right kind of engineer, but my, my, my instinct is that it would be extremely difficult to launch a rocket from a boat, just because I, I not only do you have the intense heat, um, as I think they mentioned earlier, it's, it's hot enough to melt concrete. Um, um, so not only do you have the intense heat generated, and you'd have to have a boat capable of withstanding that, there, uh, there's also the tremendous downward pressure exerted by the rockets, um, which, I, I mean, I'm thinking of, you know, a toy boat in a bathtub, pushed down real hard on one end, and it just kind of squirts over the water. Um, so, while I'm not saying that would happen, I, 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 I think it would be enormously difficult to launch a rocket from the ship. That was a previous summer test where, as you can see, it just kind of took off and then came right back down. The one we did in December was a slightly longer summer test, um, but yeah, that was that was a summer test. So yeah. So how do we work there? <laughs> how do we work there? <laughs> I'm so glad you asked that question. Um, I would I would love your resumes. We're uh, we're looking for um, uh, summer interns. Um, um, also, also potentially for uh, real jobs if, 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 you, if you're looking for that. Um, uh, um, unfortunately, at this time, you must be a U.S. citizen, or um, I think you can be a green card holder. Um, sorry, it's 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 because we do so much Department of Defense stuff. It, it, it it's it's one of the things that gives the 
if the federal government were a person, uh, this is what it would lie awake at night worrying about, is, is the possibility that some of its contractors are not here U.S. citizens. An irrational fear, perhaps, but that's another story for another day. So I'm afraid you must be a U.S. citizen or green card holder, yes? Even for internships? Even for internships, I believe. <laughs> uh, there, uh, you do not need a security clearance. It's helpful if you have one, uh, but you do not need one. Um, and then um, I, um, I would like to take your uh, your resumes if you have any. Um, I'll, I'll I'll leave my email address with, with Zach, so uh, you can email them to me um, afterwards. Where um, my my at my apartment um, 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 info Zach is. I'm kind of looking for a person who, uh, who has a strong background in security, but also knows their way around IT a little bit, because that's kind of the void we have right now. Um, or, or potentially if you don't have that, but if you're really, really good at data mining, then we're also up. to sign the scale forms or pay, come see Chris, uh, because we have to have that today, or we have to drop it from the list, because it's due today. So, thanks, and we'll see you next week.